Throughout African history, women have held leadership position alongside some of the greatest kings who ever ruled the face of the earth. Ndlorukazi Nandi Kabebe Elangeni translates to enticing, nice or the sweet one and was born in the year 1760 to a minor Langeni chief. She is the mother of the famous Shaka, king of the Zulu people. The story of Shaka Zulu is one of the most popular in Southern African history. Welcome besties to another video on African history, perceptions and culture. They say behind every successful man is a strong woman and for Shaka, it was the queen mother. Together, they built the Zulu kingdom into the formidable force we know today. Though there is little known about Queen Nandi's early childhood, it is said that she went from being a maiden who was not only treated well in the kingdom to becoming one of the most influential queens of all times in African history. A significant portion of this oral history was wiped away by the sands of time. What most of us know perhaps is the story of how she met Senzagakona, Shaka Zulu's father. So the story begins when she was on her way to visit a relative near the Babanango hill with some friends. The group encountered young hunters from the Zulu kingdom, most probably Senzagakona. It is in the company of her friends that she met him on their way back home. It is believed that they crossed paths at a pass by in an area known today as Amam Zintoti, where he drank water that is thought to be enticing, leading to their romance. The fruit of their labor has led Senzagakona apparently planting a seed in Nandi. In an act of cautious interrupters, also known as the fun of the roads, which later prove how they got carried away. When she first informed Senzagakona of her gravidness, the Zulu tribal elders refuted her claim in fear that a scandal would tarnish the royal family name. Instead, they pointed out that she was suffering from a stomach ailment caused by Ishaka beetle, which was essentially an intestinal parasite that they believed caused the bloating. Well, this was clearly a rejection, which prompted the young maiden to cross leaps and bounds to ensure the safety of her unborn child. When the time came for her to deliver, she birthed a son in 1787, after which she and the baby were escorted to the Zulu capital. Apparently, it was not a welcoming sight as they arrived into the Zulu kingdom, partly because their custom dictates that no ceremonial celebration for a woman already with a child is to be held. She took the child to Senzagakona and presented him as his son, therefore naming him Shaka. Even though Senzagakona initially denied paternity, he is believed to have eventually married the young maiden, making her his third wife. Well, there are some people who still believe and claim that this union did not happen. If you know something about it, do let us know in the comments below. As though this was not enough and on top of her many worries was the fact that she gave birth to an illegitimate child and was also entered into a forbidden inter-clan union. Queen Nandi's mother, Mfunda, is the daughter of Kondo, a Kwabe chief with whom intermarriages with the Zulu was unacceptable because both claimed the same ancestor. 
It seems as though the universe kept conspiring against Queen Nandi's pursuit of happiness. She conceived again and this time she birthed a girl child named Nonkuba. She was constantly mocked by her sister wives and some of their offsprings. Eventually, Queen Nandi took her daughter and son Shaka and fled from the Zulu kingdom, fearing her son's life was in limbo. Her resilience allowed them to cross paths with a certain clan. After all, she never stayed at one place for a long time. They acquainted them Tetwa clan, and here their faith was restored by the kindness of the clan leader who offered to teach Shaka some combat and leadership skills. During their stay, Queen Nandi developed great aspirations for her son. They say mothers know best, so it was as if she knew where his destiny lies. Fast forward into the future, Shaka was appointed chief of the Zulu people and honored his mother with the title queen and his personal advisor. Well, because this was not a befitting title to call his mother by name, after all, in most African culture, it's a sign of disrespect to call an elder by their name. Amanzi Amnandi would be inappropriate way to address the queen mother, so Shaka opted for Nandi instead, which means I'm taught in Isizulu and translates to nice or enticing. This is the correlation between Queen Nandi and Amnanzim Toti, which is now a popular town in South Africa. This brave African queen instilled great value onto her son, making him one of the greatest leaders known in ancient African history. She is remembered as someone who reminded her son that despite their circumstances, he will one day become a great king. As years passed by, he began to treat his mom with much admiration. In fact, many believed it was too much to an extent it became compulsive. Queen Nandi was revered and exercised a great deal of influence over the affairs of the kingdom. She was left in charge of the military while the king was engaged in campaign. It is believed that Queen Nandi was a force for moderation in King Shaka's life and during the 12 years, the kingdom grew to become one of Africa's most notable civilizations. It was later clear that King Shaka has held women in high esteem, as many of them served in the military alongside Queen Nandi. She remained King Shaka's advice until October 10, 1827, when she descended to join the ancestors, her death deeply mourned by her son and the Zulu people. We are not so sure what caused her death because there are several accounts of her passing and for this reason we thought it is safe to leave it at that. During the king's state of mourning, he became very militant, implementing tight laws, one of which was banning people from having children in the year of his mom's passing. Transgression of this law often led to execution. Queen Nandi is not only important because she is Kinshaka's mother, but because of her strength and resilience. What fascinates you more about Queen Nandi and are there any African queen stories you would want us to share? Let us know in the comments below. If you like informative and educational videos on Namibia and Africa in general, do not hesitate to share with your friends and families. 
Bye, besties.